In this video, we will be discussing about the Helicobacter pylori pathogenesis. We see it is a non spore forming gram negative bacteria, which has helical or spiral shape. As we can see in this diagram, the spiral shaped body with flagella at one end. On its body, we have the different types of binding factors, which we are going to see later on in this video. First of all, let's see the infection of Helicobacter pylori. We see the Helicobacter pylori adheres and targets the gastric epithelial tissue of stomach. Here in this diagram, we can see the stomach. It has antrum towards the duodenum, then body and then pandas. The Helicobacter pylori mostly resides and targets the antrum part of stomach shown in the diagram. And the transmission routes include the fecal oral route, gastric oral route, oral oral route or through water or it may be zoonotic that's through animals. Now let's get to the viral and factors or proteins of Helicobacter pylori. It produces different kind of viral and factors or proteins of which important ones are CAGA that's cytotoxin associated A, VACA that's vacuolating cytotoxin A, HTRA that's serine protease, HCPA that's Helicobacter cysteine rich proteins and HPNAP that's Helicobacter pylori neutrophil activating protein. Then on the other side, we have the binding factors or proteins. First one is the urease enzyme. Second one is BABA that's blood group antigen binding protein A. Third one is SABA that's sialic acid binding addition protein. And fourth one is type 4 secretion system that's T4SS. Now let's get to the mechanism of pathogenesis. Here in this diagram, we have the stomach. If we zoom into its epithelium, we have gastric epithelium having different kind of cells embedded in between. And we see these epithelial cells secrete mucus layer shown in the diagram. Then we have the gastric HCL secretion present above the mucus shown in the diagram. And on the epithelial cells, we have shown some factors like Lewis X and Lewis B and TLR molecules. And beneath the epithelial layer, we have the interstitial fluid followed by blood capillaries. Furthermore, if we see how these epithelial cells are tightly bound together, we can see some proteins doing the job. It is by E. cathrin junctions and tight junctions by occludin and claudinate proteins shown in the diagram, which bind these cells in a monolayer. So we can see this is the normal structural basis of gastric mucosa prior to infection of Helicobacter pylori. Now to start the infection, the bacteria comes in and drives the expression of urease enzymes on its membrane. This urease enzyme acts on urea in presence of water, shown in the diagram, and converts it into ammonia and carbon dioxide. The ammonia produced here neutralizes the gastric HCL, so one problem has been dealt with. Then the bacteria secretes phospholipase A which hydrolyzes the protective layer of gastric mucosal phospholipids shown in the diagram and promotes mucosal damage. So due to all these events, the Helicobacter pylori makes way towards the epithelial cells shown in the diagram. Now from here, the binding is mediated. For this, the Helicobacter pylori expresses two important molecules for binding. The first one is BABA and second one is SABA. The BABA binds with the Lewis B of host epithelial cell shown in the diagram and SABA binds with the Lewis X of host epithelial cell. After that, the viral inspectors are released by the Helicobacter pylori to start the potential infection. First one is VACA. It has two subunits P33 and P55. Both subunits enters the epithelial cell and starts vacuolating. And we see the P33 subunit of VAC-A gets into the mitochondria and drives the release of cytochrome C, which induces the apoptosis. Then the second factor is released, which is HTRA shown in the diagram. It's a protease enzyme which acts as a caesar. We see the HTRA comes in and starts cleaving the cell-to-cell -cell junctions. First of all, it cleaves e cathrin junctions and then it cleaves off the tight junctions proteins like occludin and claudin 8 shown in the animation. It must be noted here, this HTRA molecule also cleaves the extracellular matrix protein that's fibronectin, which loosens the connections between the cells of gastric epithelial monolayer, as shown in the animation. We can see we have the gap between the epithelial cells now. 
This gap enables Helicobacter pylori to transmigrate via paracellular route and then enters the basolateral side of epithelium, shown in the animation. Here it injects a pilus-like structure into the host cell called T4SS, that's type 4 secretion system. Through this T4SS, Helicobacter pylori injects CAGA molecule into the host cell, shown in the animation. Then within the cells it gets phosphorylated and drives RASROP ERK pathway by activating ERK12 molecule, which ultimately leads to production of interleukin-8. Then this interleukin-8 induces inflammation and then also mediates the recruitment of leukocytes towards the target cells, shown in the animation. In the meantime, Helicobacter pylori also expresses LPS molecule on its surface, which binds with the TLR4 molecules of host. That also induces the production of interleukin-8. Then furthermore, we see ERK12 also crosstalks and activates NFKB pathway, which inhibits HK ATPase alpha production. And we know this HK ATPase is general protein for secretion of gastric acid. When this is getting inhibited during the pylori infection, that time gastric acid won't be secreted, thus causing atrophic gastritis. So we see all these events for a prolonged time can lead to gastric cancer. Now moving towards another factor of Helicobacter pylori. It secretes here HPNAP, that's Helicobacter pylori neutrophil activating protein. It crosses the epithelium and then recruits and activates neutrophils and mast cells. It also drives Th1 immune response, which releases pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha, interleukin-6, interleukin-12, and interleukin-23. The release of these pro-inflammatory cytokines leads to gastric inflammation and gastric mucosal injury. And then we have the ICFA factor from bacteria which triggers an immune response causing inflammation. So at the end we can see how all these virulence factors drive pro-inflammatory pathways that leads to gastric cancers, ulcers, cytotoxicity, cell damage and many other damaging processes. Now let's have a look on the symptoms of Helicobacter pylori infection. We see the symptoms may vary and some people may not experience any symptoms at all. However, common symptoms include abdominal pain or discomfort, nausea and vomiting, bloating and belching, heartburn, loss of appetite, and unintentional weight loss. But it must be noted here that these symptoms can also be associated with other gastrointestinal conditions. So it's better to consult a doctor for accurate diagnosis. So this is all about Helicobacteria pylori infection and its pathogenesis. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. You can support my work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thanks.